Hello everyone, welcome to GGN. This is part 5. I think it's the last part of the final part. Well, I guess we'll see. Uh, this is Wednesday, May 29th, 2013. Okay, in China, food scares put Miles' self-sufficiency goal at risk. The discovery of dangerous levels of toxic cadmium and rice sold in the southern city of Guangzhou, the latest in a series of food scandals, has piled more pressure on China to clean up its food chain, possibly at the expense of Mao Zedong's cherished goal of self-sufficiency. So, that's kind of funny. Wasn't there like millions of people that starved, just like in Russia, <laughs> for their little food programs? It pledged at least 95% self-sufficient as even as demand increases and the fastest and biggest urbanization process in history swallows up arable land. Again, this is synthetic. This is completely engineered society. So, Of course, the solution is usually another uh, synthetic solution to the problem. Kind of like, you know, uh, with pharmaceutical drugs, instead of actually uh, creating a cure, they just create something to treat the symptoms and not the disease. So, but uh, talking about talking about food safety, I mean, dude, they've had they've discovered stuff in their milk. Um, I think they have cadmium even in their milk and stuff like that. Um, uh, it's actually something else. But uh, there, I've also seen stories about uh, rice, uh, rice in China actually being made of like plastic. Um, also, garbage-fed beef. Their beef feeding in garbage dumps. China's Shenghui to buy Smithfield Foods for $4.7 billion. So Swangxi International said it would buy Smithfield Foods Incorporated, a U.S. company, for $4.7 billion in cash to help satisfy growing demand for U.S. made pork in its home market. But the deal may ri raise concerns in the United States. It says here it comes after Smithfield's largest shareholder uh, was agitated for change. At the Virginia-based pork producer, the world's largest, including a call to break up the company, the deal is subje uh, subject to review by the U.S. Committee on Foreign Investment in the United States, a government panel that reviews transactions that would bring U.S. businesses under foreign control. It would be the largest Chinese takeover of a, over, of a U.S. company with an enterprise value of $7.1 billion, which includes the assumption of debt. Cradle turns smartphone into handheld biosensor. It performs exactly as large as $50,000 uh, spectrophotometer. So, in the laboratory, researchers and physicians in the field could soon run on the spot tests for environmental toxins, medical diagnosis, food safety, and more with their smartphones. University of Illinois has developed a Cradle, an application for the iPhone that uses the phone's built in camera and processing power is a biosensor to detect toxins, proteins, and bacteria, viruses, and other molecules. You can go check it out. Links will be posted. Monsanto found guilty of chemical poisoning in landmark case from May 25th. So the French farmer can no longer perform, perform his routine farming duties because of permanent pesticide injuries as his day in court, literally, and the perpetrator of his injuries found guilty of chemical poisoning. So... This uh, Monsanto lasso weed killer formula, which contains the active ingredient Alishar, or whatever, uh, caused Paul Francois to develop lifelong neurological damage that manifests as persistent memory loss, headaches, and stuttering during speech. So this has happened with Indian farmers as well. Um, uh, not just that it's uh, poisonous and uh, causing side effects, uh, but the, the GMO crops, you know, if they don't, if they don't, if they don't uh, use the the patented seeds and all that, uh, uh, then they can get sued, and they can, you know, they have to try to see that the problem is, is that they have to every time a new season comes, they have to pay the money that they earned to buy m new seeds. Whereas before, you just, you know, you have your own seed stockpiles, you can reuse the ones from your last crop, but they can't do that. They have to keep replacing them with new ones. Uh, so they used the, they used the pesticides to actually ingest and kill themselves. There's been issues down uh, in Central South America with kidney failure among farmers, and they think that it has to do with the pesticides. I believe it was for sugar farms. Um, Illinois illegally seizes bees resistant to Monsanto's Roundup kills remaining queens. The Illinois Agricultural Department illegally sees privately owned bees from renowned naturalist uh, Mr. Ingram without providing him a search warrant 
and before the court hearing on the matter. So it says here, they've, uh, behind the obvious violation of his constitutional rights as Monsanto, he was researching Rondout's effect on bees where he raised them for 58 years. They ruined 15 years of my research, he told Prairie Advocate, by stealing most of his stock. Of course, without the bees as evidence, Ingram simply cannot defend against the phony charges of foul brood. And this is what they uh, call it, a bacterial disease, American fall brood, was detected. But he says he can prove his bees did not have that and plan to do so at the hearing. Well, not now. GM salmon genetically engineered engineering of farm animals to arrive in summer 2013 despite public op opposition. So. so I can't wait for that. It says here, hello, Franken wheat. Farmer finds engineered crop. It says it's not clear how genetically modified plants got on Oregon farm, but they're illegal. They said today uh, that a non-approved strain of genetically engineered wheat has been discovered in a field in Oregon. A farmer discovered the plants on his farm and contacted Oregon State University, which notified the USDA earlier this month. No genetically engineered wheat is currently approved for U.S. farming. So, Technically it is, though. I believe they've already been using some kind of hybrid uh, wheat um, for a long time, So, and it's not safe. So it says here, USDA said the wheat is safe to eat, but the department is investigating how it ended up in the field. So they don't know if there's any criminal wrongdoing or whether it's, uh, its growth is widespread. They go on to say many countries around the world will not accept imports of genetically modified foods. Well, I wonder why. But hey, here in the U.S., we'll do it, right? In Canada, we'll do it. Modern wheat is the perfect chronic poison, says expert. The world's most popular grain is also the deadliest for the human metabolism. Modern wheat isn't really uh, wheat at all uh, and is perfect chronic poisoning, according to Dr. William Davis, a cardiologist and author and leading expert on wheat. This is what I've covered before. So it actually has something in there that uh, uh, um, hinders your metabolism and makes you more hungry, so you eat more. Once agribusiness took over to develop a higher yielding crop, we became uh, hybridized so to such an extent that it's been completely transformed from its prehistorical genetic configuration. Davis said that the wheat we eat these days isn't the wheat your grandma had. It is an 18 inch tall plant created by genetic research in the 60s and 70s. So it says here a movement has begun with people turning away from meat and dropping substantial weight. So sometimes 30 to 150 pounds. Hungry, uh, yeah, Hungary torches 500 hectares of uh, GM corn to eradicate GMOs from food supply. It's like the same in France. So these, uh, this corn, uh, GM corn was ordered burned by the government. Hungary has criminalized the planting of GMO crops of any kind have repeatedly burned thousands of hectares of illegal GM crops in the years past. So this is Monsanto's agents going out there, putting them out there. Uh, how farm waste may make biofuels matter again. This is from May 19th. I've been wanting to cover this for the past week and a half. Uh, imagine a world where leftover corn, wheat, and wood chips can be used to power your car. The process aims to transform agricultural waste most of which would normally be discarded a renewable source of fuel. We're talking about biofuels, and uh, it's interesting because I was going to tie it in with the mother of all conspiracies about uh, 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 basically turning the Great Lakes into different parts as dead zones, calling them dead zones, and uh, creating a, a letting the algae uh, uh, grow and then using it as a fuel. Yeah. Pro proliferation of algae growth in the oil companies have initially led the charge to convert our energy usage from oil to algae. So they're trying to create dead water zones. Then I saw this article, right? Because there was originally this article that was from the 19th, and this came out on the 27th. Great Lakes plan, water-based blue economy, new businesses to include resorts, labs, and manufacturing. So they go on and talk about how globalization has basically racked all these companies around these Great Lakes. Um, but it says here they're hoping for a comeback. So it says here they're looking at the water as a commodity, right? We have to do a much better job promoting it. So it goes on here, and it says that uh, they're uh, devoting... Uh, making the most of the resource, for example, a firm that focuses on using algae as fuel. Meanwhile, resorts, uh, uh, 
it doesn't really matter, right? That's the main thing. Allergy for fuel. So they're already engineering people's consent, selling it to them. So this is what we're talking about. The globalists through their government minions are in the process of destroying massive bodies of water, including but not limited to the Chesapeake Bay, the Great Lakes, the Mississippi River, and the Gulf of Mexico. That's what some people think the BP disaster was all about. The destruction is not because of neglect. It is willful destruction with very alternative, ulterior motives in mind. They're using uh, nitrates from fertilizer and Corexit to accomplish their desire to create a dead zone in these bodies of water. They're creating dead zones which allow the proliferation of algae growth and the oil companies will have initially led the charge to convert our energy usage from oil to algae. The globalists are involved in the conspiracy and have contributed massive resources to this endeavor. They're attempting to buy up as much water as possible to exasperate the destruction of water resources in these areas. In other words, Americans are looking at extreme water scarcity from which the globalists can wage wars and force submission to their will, while at the same time carry out their stated depopulation agenda. So we keep hearing about these water wars and water scarcity. Well, why is that? Well, besides uh, weather modification, uh, besides possibly uh, climate shift into a cooling or uh, mini ice age where, you know, like I said before, you have ice sheets building, that's where the water can go. Um, they're going to create this problem. Uh, fracking, too, uh, with sinkholes, that's another thing. My instincts tell me that this conspiracy has uh, more breadth and depth than what is revealed. Sonny Bono, Richard Branson, and Olivia Wilde make fun of Illuminati conspiracies and ad for clean water. On the 24th in February, Matt Damon launched a campaign to raise awareness about the lack of clean water in third world countries. While this is an important and noble cause, an ad promoting it featuring Bono, Richard Branson, Olivia Wilde uh, pretty much focuses on something else, ridiculing Illuminati-related conspiracies. Why? Nobody really knows. The video about clean water ends with billionaire Branson yelling, Illuminati, assemble. What's the relation? Don't know. Is this supposed to be funny? Well, I didn't laugh. What's however most mind-boggling is that the celebrities in the ad don't seem to be concerned about water as much as they are about making fun out of Illuminati conspiracies. Then you have Richard Branson who probably has enough money to fix the entire problem by himself but prefers to do lame jokes on YouTube. Then there's Olivia Wilde who says she's an android from the future because apparently those who seek the truth about the world are also dumb enough to believe that she's an android from the future. Japan harnesses the power of both wind and uh, tide so says here that uh, power generation systems being developed by a Japanese company, a floating system that shares vertical floating access that will generate double or more power from the same sea surface area as conventional wind turbines. The turbines will be tested in the fall. They could uh, generate enough energy to power about 300 households. Cryptagon's uh, website owner says, if you're like me, you're going to wonder how the vertical power generation axis is going to handle the sheer stress caused by the rest of the unit bobbing around on the surface. I always wondered if they could put, like, you know, windmill turbines uh, in the ocean uh, where the uh, currents and stuff are and generate power that way. Of course, it's the same thing with the wind, uh, with the windmills or um, wind turbines, uh, you know, killing birds and stuff like that. But that's why I like the idea of, um, of uh, you know, uh, not having roads anymore and cars kind of, you know, hovering in that. Uh, so then animals can still do their movements. They don't have to, have to worry about roadkill. They don't have to worry about runoff from the roads. So it says here, funnel wind turbine generates jaw-dropping power. A Minnesota-based company thinks it could design or have a design that can bring the cost of wind power down to a price competitive with natural gas. So the utility scale system of these wind turbines uh, could cost as low as one cent per kilowatt. So they capture wind using wide mouth funnels. Inside passageways turn the wind horizontally and taper it into a narrow space which naturally accelerates the flow. So the higher speed wind is then channeled into a turbine positioned at ground level. And there's the picture again. If I want to see it. Japan must continue efforts to deactivate Fukushima nuclear plant, says a UN agency. A Japan particle accelerator accident on May, May 26, at least six researchers suffered internal radiation exposure when an experiment involving elementary particles went awry, and up to 24 more are feared to have been similarly explode, exposed. So, 
you know, Japan, I just hear about their economy uh, plunge, you know, getting going down in the tanks. Man, if they could just use their brains and create technology like this, become self-sufficient uh, with energy, they can bring it back. Thank you.